the humble fire steel ferro rod, ferrocerium rod, or whatever the heck you want to call it. Let's talk about how to use it and some tips and tricks about how to get the most out of your ferro rod. Let's jump into it. Okay guys, so today I'm making this video because I realized that, you know, I talk about ferro rods and how much I like them, why you should always carry one, and you know, what the best brand is, but I've never really discussed about how I use this, how I use ferro rods, and why, or how to use them to the best, at least in my opinion. Of course, there are many different techniques and many different ways to skin a proverbial cat. So ultimately, if you're already using a ferro rod and you can reliably get, you know, fire started within one to two, maybe even up to five strikes, then you're probably already doing quite well. And I will tell you that the biggest secret and the biggest trick or tip I can give anyone about effectively using a fire steel or ferro rod isn't so much in how you utilize the ferro rod, though we will talk about technique in a little bit, it's ultimately how you process your tinder because at the end of the day, like, uh, like a true or traditional fire steel or flint and steel, um, it's all about how, it's all about being able to capture the spark and make that spark a fire so it's not so much the ability to produce sparks which a ferro rod and just about any decently sharp metal object can do it's about the receptacle of those sparks so it is important to throw good sparks but it's more important to have tinder processed in a way that catches those sparks and catches on fire very effectively now you can use many different types of fire or tinder materials but the biggest thing when using a fire steel or ferro rod is that you want something that has a lot of surface area and something that is pretty flammable as it is now a lot of marketing hype will claim that ferro rods throw sparks at 5,000 you know Fahrenheit or whatever you know some ridiculously high number and that's probably not an inaccurate number but what's more than the actual heat the unfortunate part about fire seals and flint and steel is that the actual sparks do not last that long. So even though you may have a very hot spark, if that spark only lasts one or two seconds, it's not going to be very effective at catching anything like a piece of wood or, you know, the wet grass or something that's not immediately combustible so when you have a piece of tinder and in this case we're talking about birch bark you want lots of surface area and you want something that's already highly combustible so this could also be for instance a vaseline soaked cotton ball this could be um this could be ust this could be UST wet fire, this could be tinder quick, there's many different things that fall into this category, but ultimately what you want to do is take your tinder, make sure that it is, uh, that it has high surface area and that it is readily combustible, so that it's dry and it's ready to go. Okay, so once you've identified your tinder and your tinder is properly prepared, let's talk about some techniques that you're usually helpful. So one of the most common mistakes with a ferro rod or fire steel that most people make is that they try to take the ferro rod, or the ferro rod here, sorry, and they try to strike it like this. They try to shower the sparks into the actual uh, tinder that they're trying to start. And this is something that I try to tell people to heavily avoid because whenever you're moving the knife towards the tinder that you're that you're trying to light on fire, even if you're just trying to shower sparks in general, this can one lead to the object, the striker, in this case a knife, hitting that said uh, tinder and disrupting it, disturbing it, and either A, causing you to not light it on fire, or B, messing up the fire and kind of putting it out, if you will. The second point, too, is that this is a lot less stable. So what I like to do when I teach people how to start fires with ferro rods is that I encourage you to use a base of support, usually a knee. So I have my knee right here, as you guys can hopefully see. And what I'll do is I'll move this a little bit closer. And what I do is I essentially plant my 
knife or my striker in into a very solid base of support. It doesn't have to be the knee. Sometimes you can brace off your hip. You can brace off of just about anything that's reasonably solid. Even if you actually just have to hold the ferro rod, that can be reasonably solid as well. But I prefer to have a base of support, if at all possible. And then you actually strike back on the ferro rod. So you just pull the ferro rod back like such and essentially what this allows you to do is one have rapid strikes because your striker isn't going anywhere your striker is very solid here and it also allows you to not disturb your tinder the next thing you want to do is get that base of support in this whole kind of unit close to what you're trying to start so you can see that my striker is right here my tinder is right here and then you want to just shower sparks onto it Okay, so now let's give this a shot. <laughs> okay, and so another thing that I generally recommend with people, uh, I see a lot even on YouTube, is when people are trying to start fair rod fires, they're very often just trying to like shower sparks like this, or they're trying to do really fast strikes like that. Usually with when I start fires, I try to give it some time. So hopefully I could illustrate that here. I was going a little bit quicker, but uh, if you're throwing good sparks, what I like to do is, you know, sit there, throw a really good set of sparks, let it fall, let it get the chance to either start or not start. And then if it didn't work, you know, strike again. And, um, I think that that is a better way, and once again, if you are trying to be conservative on your ferro rod, which this one I'm not too much, this is more of a demo fire rod, as you can see it's a little bit chattered up, but um, by and large, especially if you're in a real survival situation and you need to make each strike count, I'm not a huge fan of these people or this technique of, you know, like scraping off a lot or trying to do these kinds of ideas. They can work just fine. And once again, if that is your technique, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but it will make you wear out your rods faster. And ultimately, once again, when it comes back to starting a fire with a ferro rod, it's really more important that you have a good setup and a good preparation of the tinder rather than trying to force your ferro rod to just start the fire. So oftentimes, if I'm failing to start a fire with a ferro rod, I won't, you know, continue to sit there and, you know, try to strike it a whole bunch like that, but rather I'll take a step back see how I can improve my tinder or my fire starter, and then go from there. Now, of course, in an emergency, if you do need to, and you know, if you're just in dire straits, you know, you don't have any other option, this uh, ferro rod, you know, most ferro rods have a high degree of magnesium in them, so you can sit there and, you know, shave off some magnesium, and, you know, then actually, you know, strike as I proceed to bite myself there a little bit with the fire, but you can, um, you know, shave off some of your ferro rod and use it to help start your fire if you're in dire straits, but just understand that, you know, if you're shaving off bits of your ferro rod to start the fire, that that is going to be, you know, less life on your ferro rod. So you want to just keep these things in mind and you want to, uh, you know, be cautious, uh, of how you're using your ferro rod and remember that you know that's my preferred method of you know moving the ferro rod back and i think that with a good knife like a you know a knife that has a properly sharpened spine and with a good ferro rod like these light my fire armies you know you can uh, use this technique to high effect as i just showed and you know uh, that's my preferred method. That's what I usually teach people. And once again, you don't necessarily have to brace off of a knee. You can brace off of many different parts of your body and um, or things that are around you. So you don't necessarily have to play it, you know, by the book per se. You can make it up as you go along. But my ultimate key to starting ferro rod fires is tinder prep, tinder prep, tinder prep. Uh, you know, make sure that your tinder, your fire starter you know all of that is ready prepped and readily combustible and once again you want to try to give yourself as large a surface uh, to catch 
on fire because when you throw a ferro rod spark, you know, kind of when it goes out, you know, it's not all just in one condensed area when you throw your spark. They're kind of all over. So that is my strategies. That's how to use a ferro rod from my perspective and my point. I use them quite a bit. This is basically what I do every time I start a ferro rod fire. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.